Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Cindy Wong, a fourth year pathology resident. And today I like to take the opportunity to tell everyone a little bit more about what it takes to become a pathologist as well as if you're a current third year medical student, why you should consider pathology as a subspecialty for the next ERAS cycle. So to become a pathologist, you first need to go through four years of undergrad, you need to go through four years of med school, and when you apply for pathology, it's basically like you applying for any other um, residency program, and pathology residency training on average is about four years if you are going to do the full spectrum of pathology and it's three years if you are just kind of picking one half. Overall, after your residency, most pathology residents do one to two fellowships, which are subspecialties of pathology. So for example, I am doing a GI fellowship, so I am doing something that is basically focusing on the tubular gut, which is basically from the esophagus to the stomach to the small intestine colon, and also includes like the gallbladder, the pancreas, and the liver. There's other subspecialty that is like gyne, which is focusing on the female reproductive organs like the uterus, cervix, uh, and ovaries. And there's other specialties like GU, head and neck, there's bone and soft tissue, there's skin. So that means in total pathology training could be four to six years, which I consider as a selling point for why you should become a pathologist. In medicine, the shortest training for residency is to do general medicine or PEDS or family medicine, which are three-year programs, which you could also do for pathology. You could do just half of pathology subspecialty in three years. You don't have to do a fellowship, but I think most people, because pathology is such a broad topic that they want to subspecialize into one or two specialties that they want to practice for the rest of their lives. And that's why people finish in six years. I actually will be finishing in five years because I, after my four years of training, only plan to do one more fellowship. So that will take me in five years. And after that, I'll be looking at a job as a board certified pathologist. Another thing about pathology, which depends on how you look at it, could be for some people a plus or for some people that is a minus, is that there is very little or not very little. There is, yes, very little <laughs> patient interaction. So another plus for pathology would be our nice work-life balance. I think within pathology, um, on average for a resident, you would really only be working 40 to 60 hours a week. There's definitely some weeks where you're pushing it to that 80 hour work limit for the ACGME, but that I would say probably wouldn't be most of the time, at least from personal experience, that's the case. And then I feel like other than what you do at work when you're home, there's really, you don't have to worry about notes. You don't have to constantly think about the patient who you have to see the next day and think about their clinical course and what will happen overnight. For me, when I go home at night, if I have wrapped up all my work that day, I go home and I get to enjoy my life. I get to play some video games to relax and spend time with my dog and my husband. So to me, I feel like there's a very good balance between work and just what happens with your everyday life. So to follow up on that, an additional perk would be that there is no in-house call for pathology. We do have call, but it's all home call. When you think about it, there's really not many things that would make a pathologist wake up in the night to come into the hospital for. The only things I could think of really are the frozen diagnosis I mentioned. If an OR is having a case that requires you to come in to do a diagnosis while they're doing procedure, the most common case is generally uh, transplants where there is a liver transplant and you need to come in to say is this liver good enough for transplant or not. The other thing that could happen is in the blood bank which you will come in if there is an emergent overnight apheresis procedure. But other than that, most pathology call could be handled over the phone and on a computer. So with all of that, I really hope that I convinced at least some of you to consider pathology and maybe at least doing a pathology rotation in medical school to give it a try to see if this might be something you're interested in. Well, I think that's 
it for this video. If anyone wants to know more or have any questions, leave a comment down below. And as always, like and subscribe, and I will hope to see everyone soon. Bye!